Hi, Applebee. My name is Ella, and I have a few confessions to make. Number one, I'm sick of my long hair and being called the long-haired girl, but I'm too scared to chop it off before graduation in case I end up looking hideous. So I'm a little bit of a coward. Number two, I hate math. I hate most STEM subjects, and AP Calculus made me have three breakdowns while meeting with my counselor over a grand total of four tests because my passion lies elsewhere in English. And here's the real reason behind it all. I'm only taking AP Calculus because it looks good on my US application. Or that's just what they say because after suffering through 75% of AP Calc, I got rejected from my top choice university in the US last week. So that's that. Moving on. Well, you've just heard about my insecurities regarding several things, from not knowing what to do with my hair to failing to get into a school where everyone around me thought I had a good chance at succeeding. But do any of my vulnerabilities change your opinions about me? Sure, maybe you thought I was a computer science prodigy, and I, I just, I'm a hardcore physics nerd. So you are shocked that I have zero talent in STEM and I love humanities. But let's be honest, those superficial opinions don't matter. What's truly important is how others see me as a person. And that doesn't change because I display vulnerability. Over my years at Appleby, I've gradually learned about the importance of showing vulnerability and never being afraid of it. Coming from a Chinese family, I was always told to be independent and bear my own burdens. Solving extremely difficult situations by myself was the key to helping me learn and making me grow. Now, I'm not suggesting that tackling problems independently impedes your learning. In fact, I believe it's an excellent method to explore, discover, and devise practical solutions that stay with us far longer than they would if someone simply handed us the answers. However, what if there is a condition to this method of learning? And it goes something like this. You can't show weakness. You can't voice your struggles. You just have to swallow the blood, sweat, and tears and emerge victorious as if it has cost you nothing. You know, it's like that icy, iconic childhood movie we've all watched. Don't let them in. Don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. That was me. And you can see how that train of thought might turn problematic really fast. But I sustained that for as long as I possibly could, driven by the belief that revealing my vulnerability might lead my friends, and particularly my teachers, to think less of me. So I coped, and I paid the consequences. Improving in areas where I lagged became an uphill battle, as each unasked question silently echoed self-doubt, a declaration of inadequacy, a whisper of not belonging. The journey doesn't accumulate in a traditional victory. Rather, it's a sombering tale of gradual decline, with grades slipping from mediocrity to the brink of failure. It was only when this situation became desperate that I thought the assistance I had long needed. In retrospect, my reluctance to acknowledge my gaps in understanding only sabotage me. The act of asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a courageous step towards overcoming obstacles. Hopefully, this story serves as an encouragement to anyone who might be hesitating to voice their uncertainties, to take that step, to ask a question. It's a prompt to shift our perspective on vulnerability from a perceived liability to a catalyst for connection, learning, and personal growth. Now, onto a happier experience. When I was in grade nine, I thought my English teacher was so, so cool. Her unique approach to teaching English opened my eyes in a way I had never experienced before. This was particularly meaningful to me as I was in the midst of exploring and identifying my passions. Yet once again, the thought of being vulnerable terrified me. So I kept to myself. Despite my initial fears, this newfound curiosity emboldened me to approach 10th grade English with an open mind, 
a sense of engagement and a determination to excel. However, as my journey progressed, I encountered the plateau in my grades, a stagnation that persisted across several assignments. In the winter, I finally dropped my ego and approached my teacher. That first step of reaching out marked a turning point. I began to frequently consult her about my academic performance, AP courses, and even my course selection. The outcomes far outweighed my initial hesitation. My teacher's guidance did more than just improve my grades. It nurtured and fueled my passion for writing, fostered the habit of introspection, and perhaps most importantly, encouraged me to pursue the AP Capstone program. Her influence was truly transformative, propelling my academic journey in a fresh, new direction. Needless to say, my academic performance saw a remarkable improvement. By the end of 10th grade, I had come to understand that vulnerability, often misconceived as a weakness, can be a powerful instrument for achieving one's goals, benefiting both parties. Communicating the importance of an assignment to a teacher and asking for their insights does not signify a lack of ability. On the contrary, it represents an openness to learning and development. This experience helped me realize the value of vulnerability in my academic pursuit, not just as a tool for personal advancement, but as a bridge to deeper understanding and connection with my teachers. Vulnerability to me is akin to a knife. Its sharp edges glisten under the sun in the hands of those who know how to use it effectively. But without the skill to wield it, it becomes another piece of burdensome metal. Honing this instrument critically hinges on self-reflection. It's essential to have a strong awareness of your strengths and weaknesses, your positive and negative habits, your areas of expertise and your challenges. Recognize both your Achilles heel and your Athena's shield. How can you manipulate vulnerability to your benefit if you don't have a good grasp of what you have to work with? Throughout the past few years, I've looked into myself and realized that I'm average. That thought used to terrify me, considering the extensive investment my parents had made into my education, alongside of my involvement in an array of extracurricular activities how could the results be merely average? Well, I'm not sure if you have heard of the Asian parent grading scale. A for average, B for bad, C is can't have dinner, D is don't come home, and F for find a new family. If we were to compare my calculus grade to this, I definitely should not have been having dinner since September. Despite my engagements in piano and badminton, how I used to play violin and cello, as well as doing swimming, figure skating, and ballet, I could not find satisfaction. Each time I picked up an instrument, stepped onto the court, or dived into a new extracurricular activity, I wasn't just learning a new scale. I was also battling the fear of mediocrity. I didn't excel in these areas. If ever there were people better than me, I considered myself as merely average. The prospect of friends and teachers discovering my averageness was terrifying. The thought of displaying vulnerability meant that my averageness would be unveiled and that horrible revelation shackled me to silence. In a culture where excellence is often expected and anything less can be seen as a failure, acknowledging my mediocrity felt akin to admitting defeat. It seemed to threaten the image I strove to maintain one of a student who was always in control, perpetually striving for excellence. My reluctance to embrace vulnerability was rooted in this fear. I worried that being open about my struggles and average aspects would somehow diminish my worth or the efforts I have invested. However, embracing vulnerability means acknowledging that being average in some areas doesn't equate to a lack of uniqueness or value. Vulnerability, in this context, transforms from a source of fear to a catalyst for genuine self-improvement and deeper connections with others. Acknowledging this opened up a space for self-acceptance and the realization that personal worth isn't measured by external achievements, but 
but by their willingness to confront and grow from one's vulnerabilities. This openness can pave the way for more meaningful relationships, opportunities for growth, and a stronger sense of self. It's about making peace with our averageness and a testament to the strength that lies in admitting where we are and the resilience in striving for where we want to be. Realizing that showing my true self with all its ups and downs isn't about being weak. It's the exact opposite. My own story, from fussing over being labeled average to finally opening up and asking for help, turned out to be more about finding strength in the spots I thought were my weakest. Sharing the truth about my struggles and the times I felt most vulnerable didn't just help me connect better with those around me. It also led me to a place of self-acceptance. This whole experience showed how important it is to be open, to ask questions, and to reach out when you're stuck. So, am I always embracing vulnerability now? Honestly, not as much as I would like to. But I'm working on it. I've come to realize that vulnerability isn't a hindrance. It's more like a bridge. It brings us closer to others, opens up avenues for learning, and makes us more resilient. So here's the thing I want you all to take away. Don't run from your vulnerabilities. Let them be your guide to exploring and pushing your limits. Understand that it's by facing and accepting our vulnerabilities that we can start to see our strengths and what we're capable of. This isn't just a one-time deal. It's an endless journey. To wrap this up, I want to encourage you to look at your vulnerabilities not as setbacks, but as stepping stones. To something greater. If you're feeling down because you just got rejected from your top choice university, well guess what? I did too. You're not special. It's okay to admit to yourself that you're average. And if you feel above average, that's cool too. But even the best superheroes have their moments of vulnerability. So you're not special either, I guess. Don't try to be special. Try to be true yourself. However, there is one exception. If you have a special talent in calculus and want to help a desperate fellow student, please reach out to me. I really, really need some help with that subject. Now, please rise and sing hymn number 352 with me, Amazing Grace. Thank you, Appleby. Mm -hmm.